Yarn Cafe. I am Christy. I'm the dyer behind Yarn Cafe Creations. And I am Tristan. I am the dyer behind Drag and Hoard Yarn. I am the mom. I am the daughter. And welcome! <laughs> How oh are my you? Gosh. Uh, I'm doing good. It's been a it's been a week and we're getting a windstorm right now. I know we're oh, we just started God. recording it and the wind has kicked up outside. We're in we're in Payson, Utah. It, it was a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. Now that it's like windy and stormy, I'm so happy. It's been I mean, so hot. This is how oh. August is, though, isn't it? It's August 17th it's... today, and August is crazy. Like, Sorry, I just saw a leaf fall, so I'm like, oh, it's, fall! It's like tumbleweed. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you guys can't, like, if you can't visualize it, just look in, you know, my, my mom's glasses. My glasses, because I get <laughs> There's perfect no way. reflection for oh. outside, but... Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. So if you hear some wind, it's because it's sensational outside Or thunder right now. and if rain. I think I saw some lightning. I'm not going to lie. We, you know, I don't know. I don't remember having storms like this when we lived in town. We live outside of town now. See, we get and some we of these get, up where I live, which is about 30 mile or 30 minutes north of where you are, 20, mm -hmm. 30 minutes north. Mm -hmm. And we get them, but we're at a different canyon basically and so we True. get to travel in between the two canyons basically and since my back porch is a little elevated we just get to like live with the wind it's great i know and i, I like the wind there. storms but sometimes they're a little aggressive sometimes it's scary it's like a little aggressive out there yeah, throwing it, tree branches around it'd be a bit much but it's so it's such a nice reprieve it after is. the week we've had with the been, heat. How was how has oh your week been? I mean, it was pretty hot this week. It's been hot. I've been dying in yarn in my bra, basically. So, much. little insider info for you guys. Yeah. Um, TMI. <laughs> TMI. Or is it? But um, <laughs> or yeah, I don't. I am not used to getting dye on my belly button, so that was a new experience for me. Hey, whatever but, works. But no, it's been so hot. I've had to send Eric home with the dogs because I'm like, I can't. I can't have him here. And yes, we do have AC. It's just really. It's bad. Well, but you um, have your studio is big. My studio is a lot too of big for the AC that has high been. ceilings. Yeah, and so like, yeah, heat rises, and so it keeps all the AC at the top basically. So yeah, it's we have fans. I have a floor AC that we've like MacGyvered because you have to have an outlet or an, uh, a place for the hot air to go out of. Oh yeah, it heats yeah. up and stuff, mm -hmm. and it pushes out cooler. And so Eric went to uh, Home Depot and he got. Um, not plywood. It's a uh, uh, the stuff you put on your walls before you put paint. Sheetrock. Sheet. Is it sheetrock? Yeah. Sheet he rock. got some sheetrock, mm -hmm. and he cut it to the the size of the width of the door that we wanted, and he hooked up the little tube to it, and we like use a bungee cord, and keep the door shut over on it, and it really those are the best kind of projects. It's pretty great. It works pretty fantastically, and so we have that going on um, daily now, which is great. And um, wow. What is but well, Vaughn, I was going to tell you, we have our we have a big shop that uh, my fiance has all of his boy stuff in, you know, building cars, tools. his cars, tools, all that. He's so, been putting siding on on the shop, so that's all out there too. It's metal, uh, steel, that. steel it's siding. Looking good. It's looking really good. But his where he works has um, they use great big air conditioners, like mm -hmm. the kind that you roll to like they're made for shops for like automotive shops, and you put them outside your your the roll-up doors mm -hmm. so that the fan part that blows blows under the door but it's a gigantic air conditioner and no i'm tempted they're like thousands of no, dollars i'm not tempted thousands and where he works she's like his boss is like i had to order a new one this one it's just getting it's i've had it for so long do you want it and he is like speaking of macgyver like Vaughn can fix anything yeah it's, he already has it fixed I'm he brought serious? it home he brought it home like two weeks ago it's already fixed. I need yeah. that. It's Have like a ever... it's a swamp cooler is what it is, but it's gigantic. I need one. Like as big as this table. Huge. I want so, one of those. I know. It's nice. Anyway. We've been suffering. But yeah, yeah no, it's yeah. been it's been hot and so when you're trying to like dye up yarn and stuff Which, and there's a lot of stuff coming up. There's that a lot of events coming up. Yeah, you guys. Uh, so we uh, sorry, getting all excited because yeah, I'm in the process of dying up for my um, my Halloween advent, which I am sold out of, um, and it was Coraline themed because we're doing for our cosplay for Comic Con this year, we're doing Coraline. That's gonna and, be cool. And I'll show you guys some because I forgot some stuff that I was gonna bring that I'm actually knitting for my cosplay this year. <laughs> so I'll bring that that next week when we have record. you ever done knitted stuff for your cosplay? No, no, I haven't. That's I'm like, really why cool. am I not like knitting myself dresses and stuff? And then I remember back to my La Haba pattern that I released, and I'm like, oh, that's why I'm not knitting dresses. That's it your takes dress, so huh? long. They do. Yeah, they take a lot. Um, 
You know who That's has something. come out with some really cute dresses too? Hmm. Little Wolf Mix. I was actually going to say that. I'm like, Brianna. I just saw that she did. Our friend Brianna. Was it her wedding? Um, she did a, a wedding. Uh, I like think she did like a dress. I don't think her dress was a wedding dress. She did like a, she did do a dress, yes, for like after. But didn't yeah. she do like a wrap or something that, I don't know. Sorry, oh, I Brianna. I, can't, I knew she did something and she got it done in time. No, I just saw she or, did a, a reel on Instagram, which. Yes, that cute dress she tried on. And uh, yeah. she uh, she overdyed it after. And now oh. it's like a chartreuse color. And I'm like, that is so that. cute. That's such a great idea to like just repurpose things. She's She's got some cute uh, Yeah, she's dresses. very innovative. I love that. Yes, um, yes. But, uh, but yeah, so I've just been dying up the advent because in a little while we have to dye up our uh, Christmas yeah, at we're, Hogwarts. We're on year, year seven. seven. And the, as some of you know this, book seven is very large. Yeah. And even last year's was a big book. Book six is yeah. the next biggest one, I think, or four. I four, think five is the biggest Or five, one. yeah. It was um, four or five. And so we decided to break it into two years. So and it's not that it's like the longest books. I don't. I don't know that it is. I, I can't remember if it's seven or five that is the longest one. But there's just so much there's information, information in it and so much like plot line and yeah events and stuff. And so it's like okay, so we're breaking it up into two different years. Plus we don't really, you know, we don't want the the journey to end just yet. We love doing it. Uh, yeah. So I, we do yeah. have some of those left. I have some in my shop. We always split them. I just barely sold out mm -hmm. of my last one. So they are, yep. there's still like a couple left in your shop, but I yeah. know that they're going to be going gonna, out pretty we've, soon. We've never not sold out. Yeah. So, so we will sell out. There's a couple left and um, I'm so excited about this year though, because there's so much to play with. There's so much to work with. I mean, you have it's the Horcruxes, so you have... Um, some sad parts. You have some sad parts. You have to death, like Hallows. You have, oh, there's so much to work with. Yeah, so it's going to be good. With. Yeah. All the deaths. So your Halloween one is sold out? It is sold out, unfortunately. And my autumn box is sold out. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm getting ready to send those out probably in the next week, within I the next week. I still have a few weeks left. I have half the advent died up, and then I started working on my woolen folk stuff because I'm like, we got to get those done. You know, I didn't do a Halloween one this year, by the way. I was, really? I just remember that. I, yeah, I usually do, but I didn't. I love it. But yeah, because, because of woolen because folk. Because of woolen folk because it's, yeah. such a, it's such a big time investment. So if you guys don't know, woolen folk is... Um, an indie yarn festival type thing. It, it has been a one day pop up this year. It's going to be two. And it's happening in New York during, right before the, the, the New uh, York Sheep and Wool Festival. Yeah, yeah. What we all call Rhinebeck. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. there's always a couple fringe events that weekend um, that go on, a couple different like one day shows. But I don't, I don't know how long they were planning this show before, but it is like, it, it, the first year we went was the first year it was open, and it, it was smallish. Kinda. It was smallish, but it still it felt like it. The way that it was run was like you guys have been doing this for a few years. It was well done, and yeah. I don't think I don't I didn't hear any complaints about. I still have it. And then last and, year we vended. And it's human nature. Let's face it. I'm not trying to be like a downer about things, but every year you know you'll you hear, hear something buzz about how a show went and how mm -hmm. how smooth it was, or or if it was. Too, too crowded <laughs> or whatever. I think we all went through that a couple of years, like a few years well, like ago. A few years ago, but mm -hmm. and they, there's several fun. different. Well, I guess now there's probably four events. I think there's four. I can't four, remember. And they all kind of mesh really well together. Mm -hmm. People are able to go to several. They're Some all very don't, different. I like how Woolen Folk is like. No, we want this to be like an like almost like an indie music festival, and they it, have like a band, really, a live band on the stage, like several and different like bands. Alcohol actually. is sold there, mm -hmm. right? Which is weird. <laughs> I mean, for those people that that drink that. That's, that's yeah. great. And no, they they have a like specific covered seating area. Last year they did. They had a bar area. They had a podcaster lounge, which it was more like um, I was gonna say they called it a podcaster lounge, but it was like a panel. It was like panels and stuff, which I think is I brilliant. Like, I, I, I love people it. loved it. I, I love going to things. conventions and like sitting down and like listening instead of like trying to have those personal connections, which you can still do. But if they can answer a bunch of questions. For everyone, mm -hmm. but like the podcasters don't have to repeat themselves, and then you can have more of that one-on-one -on -one connection in person. And I just, I think they were super respectful to do that for the podcasters as well. And just people were it very can be happy. So overwhelming. I, I heard feedback about the podcaster lounge, and it was like a grassy area, mm -hmm. like a grassy knoll area. Yeah, people right were along just the river. People were just Ugh. sitting on the grass while they had the podcasters up. And mm -hmm. I, I think it went heard, to the bar, grabbed some snacks. There were some yeah. vendor, uh, some food vendor trucks. And I, I really picnic. love the venue that it's at, but it, it's changed this it's year. It's changed this year. Um, but and it's, it's because, oh, it's because there was a wedding. 
oh, that yeah. got rescheduled because of COVID a few years ago. Okay. For that weekend. So, boo. But I, it's even when great... we were there this last weekend, I heard about the orchard that we're vending at this year because it's the Stonewood, is it? What was Stone this? Ridge. Stone Ridge uh, Apple Orchard. Stone Ridge Orchard, and it's in Stone Ridge, New York, mm-hmm. which I guess is real it's close. It's like right by Socrates. Yeah. I think it's cl- like between Socrates and uh, Kingston, actually. It's like right kitty corner. So last year was the second year and we chose mm-hmm. to bend and we shared a booth which so much fun. that was, was a little tough was a for fun. us because uh, it was just busy. It's a very bus- busy festival um, which since I think it's all, all day, of them though, are. They're all, all busy but I like how like since it is an all day festival and mm-hmm. it has like dedicated places to relax to like and it's not, it wasn't indoor things. into a place you had to squish into. It was no, actually like a very big pavilion. Open. And I know they're doing that this year too. With it's a the pavilion. Actual ap- well, it's an apple orchard. And so it's a lot more spaced out. But it, I don't think it's a pavilion. They have a pavilion. I, I don't think even that's know. where the bar is. Yeah. But if, um, you, if you haven't gone and you I would like it. to go. It's going to be so good this year. I have so many things I'm planning for it. It's great. And I just, I just wanted to say once again, I haven't heard any negative about no. it. No. As busy as it was last year, it still was so open that you had plenty of room. People had plenty of room mm-hmm. to walk between the booths. They um, made a point to make it accessible, too. And there was a lot of faces that I recognized. I was actually kind of surprised at how many well-known designers were there. I got starstruck there. like four or five I times. I'm just like, oh, hi, welcome to my booth. What's yeah, up? It was, and there's some, there were some great vendors and some newer vendors. Yeah. Um, we're both vendoring this year in, in separate booths, but I'm still going to share my booth with my other daughter, Alaska, Alaska, who is now dyeing yarn under uh, her company is Synthal Yarn, and uh, we're excited. She's very excited. It's I'm gonna be, so excited. She's very talented, natural talent. Can we just like, talk about how long it took me to be talented? You were still more she natural so at it than instant. I was. It's hard. And oh, she's sorry. really good. She's really good with color, she just, too. Yeah, she's just very... And you know it's so she, natural for her. And she just had knee surgery. I know. And so she's recovering from she's knee like surgery. She's like hobbling along, trying to yeah, do a couple be, things here and there. But she has it'll be a perfect, good. Though I think she'll be. She has okay a good amount bringing. I'm I'm so excited to see mm-hmm. how she does and stuff because yeah, her out. colors are so different from both of ours. You should go check out her shop. She's got yeah. Uh, she's got some great colors. I think she's going to be bringing most of those colors. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think she's coming out with a couple. Yeah, uh, maybe I, she's saying something about a couple new ones that she's planning on. That's cool. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, but um, you'll love it. It's going to be a good weekend. But yeah, I'm excited because so. the list of vendors just keeps growing every year. And and this year they did do, they're doing something different this oh, year. Oh, yeah. They decided, it's a Thursday show. It's on Thursday, the, or Friday, it's a Friday show. Mm-hmm. Friday the 20th of October. Mm-hmm. Um, but they added the 19th from 3 to 7, I believe. It's like just so, a par- yeah. partial day. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like a VIP day. It's called a warm-up. Um, I know that uh, Friday is like twenty eight to thirty dollars to get in. It's, it's with tax. It's like thirty three bucks, I think. Okay, and then I think what we we decided the day before, it's a, a lot more money. I mean, it's yeah. an investment. I think it's over two hundred dollars, but you get both days. You get a dinner. Mm-hmm. You get parking for both days. And what was the other? Was that? Well, yeah, you get admission for both days. Mm-hmm. You get free, or, well, you get the parking included for both days. Mm-hmm. And then um, you get a catered dinner by a local um, establishment. That would be nice. And I think they're, and you, they were planning more perks for that night, like raffles, drawings, but stuff like cool that. But the cool thing is, is you get early bird, basically early oh, bird access. Oh, I'm bringing things specifically for that night. I am too. I think I'm going to bring some special mm-hmm. warm-up type gifts. I'm going to be doing a couple drawings for that night. I think they'll be I'm fun. excited. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have, like, the show colorway for both days enough, hopefully. I think they'll be doing, they might be doing drawings and stuff, too. I don't know. That's what I, I was know. thinking they were saying. Um, but don't quote me on that, but I know that I'm going to be doing uh, fun things in the booth and random uh, brush up on your Greek trivia. Oh, yeah. Because I'm going to be doing random trivia throughout that night as well in our booth to you win. Are. In your spare special time? Things. Oh, yeah. Oh, my spare time. Because you had so much spare time last year. Uh-huh. God, I, I don't even remember that day <laughs> very much. It was busy. It was, it was fun. Lot. It was fun. I always I always enjoy that, though. But so we hope to see you there. Let us yeah. know in the comments if you're going. Yeah. and So we can watch for you. Yeah, and we're we're still planning a couple of our different... I know I am. I know you were saying something about it, like different bases to bring. Um, I have a, a wide range of colors I'm choosing from right now, but I'm really tempted on bringing uh, my Paul Worth DK. 
I, I yeah, I think I'm going to bring so some of mine too. Yeah, I love Paul Worth. I make most of my sweaters in Paul Worth. I have been transitioning to that a lot more recently, actually, just because they hold up very, very well. But I, I'm such a sucker for the softness of merino. So I'm, I'm curious what you guys um, actually prefer to knit when you're knitting on DK, because okay. I think merino has been so like. It's so it's popular. Not necessarily, not, yeah, not necessarily like pushed, but kind of pushed in the past like well, 10 years or so. Because it's easier. It's it's available to all the yarn yeah. the distributors. Everybody has marine. That's true. Everybody has marine. And it's soft, and people like soft. And I think going from commercial yarn to, although commercial yarn is kind of scratchy. Yeah. You go from commercial well, to, to yeah. hand-dyed yarn. Merino is so much softer. Um, it is. I think I like Paul Worth because it tends to pill less. It doesn't. Like it doesn't stretch out as mm -hmm. much like when, when it gets worn. When you're, yeah, when it's worn it's or when you're walking. Durable. I really like it for color work. It's so good because it's, it's so kind of sticky. Mm -hmm. Not sticky like non superwash, but sticky like, it's not as soft, so it's a yeah. Little sticky, but yeah. I mean, I still, I would still wear it next to skin, uh -huh. but it's not merino. So I'm really curious what you guys think. Uh, let us know in the comments. Yeah. Uh, give us some perspective, I guess. Because otherwise, we'll, we'll probably just do what we want. Yeah. yeah, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> so, anyway, so Wool and Folk, make sure you guys um, get a ticket to that if you can. If you haven't been and you usually go to other ones on that day, I know that the other ones have time slots. So, yeah. maybe just pick a time slot that allows you to also go to this one because it, it really is worth it. Yeah, There's and the, the price vendors. is for all day. And it's... It's really great. It's like all day. It's, it wasn't like noon to 7. I think it was like 12 to 7. Yeah. 12 to 8, 12 to 7 or something. Oh I don't remember. It's a lot of fun. It was a blur. Oh, God so much fun though but yeah. yeah so let us know if you're going but yeah. I am curious yeah. as to what you're wearing oh yes um I'm wearing a sweater I knit actually I knit it uh, a few months ago um I don't even remember did what you it. have that great basin I don't think I brought it oh I don't there was a lot of things I was gonna do for great basin god great intentions well right before great basin I got really sick with oh. this weird vertigo oh, yeah. episode I just remembered that for yeah. six weeks, I had vertigo, and I don't hard. know, and then it just one day it was gone, and it hit me again two weeks, three weeks ago, and then... Were you stressed? It happened for, uh, not when it hit me again. The first time, it hit me so hard the first three, two, three days that I was vomiting violently. Oof. Like, it was such a violent, like, if you've ever had, been drunk, or you spin around <laughs> when you're a little kid, and then you lay on the grass, and okay. everything is kind of going, rrr, rrr, that's what it's like. Oh my God. And so uh, then after three or four days, it started to get better, a little better, but it took six weeks to go away. And it went away the week before Great Basin. Okay. So there was a lot of grand plans yeah. that I had for Great Basin. Fiber, that was a fiber festival we did here in Utah. Um, and I wasn't able to do a lot. But anyway, I made this. Uh, this is the La Pouf sweater with a little bit less La Pouf than yeah. the, the pattern has. I actually prefer that. I do too. I the This is by um, Beata Jezek. Beata Jezek. Jezek. She's the dyer behind Hedgehog Fibers. Mm -hmm. The amazing, uh, what is it called? The, the, the OG. She's like yeah, one of serious. the original hand dyers. Yeah, the, one of the original dyers. specklers. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's a it's a just a short sweater, marled. I would stand up. We just don't have a lot of room. Yeah, if we stand stuff. up, that wall is falling over. Yeah, it's we're just taped together. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I have to spread my legs. Don't, okay, don't I mind will, me. I'll oh send her over here. Here you my go. I'll angle like a lady. Okay. But it's a marled, and I forgot how much I loved knitting marled. I don't think I've knit marled. I've crocheted okay. marled. You have. I haven't knit marled. Mm -mm. For those of you that don't know what marled is. Um, is it's fingering weight. You could do it with any weight, but I used this the pattern called for two strands of fingering weight, and you start out with two strands of the same color, and then you drop one strand and add your second color, and then you knit a panel, and then you drop that first color and add a, your next color. So you're you've I always got two two going. That's such an easier way to fade, in my opinion. Like to it create really is. more but, of a seamless fade, especially if your two colors that are next to each other aren't necessarily like. The closest fade, okay, listen, it you helps don't, you. You don't even need. That's the thing about. Um, and Stephen West does a, a ton of marled. Okay. He's got. If you want to do fun marled projects, he's and you don't want to do a sweater. He's got so many shawls that are marled. Okay. A marled madness. I think he did a yeah, really long one year. Yeah. Um, but it. Uh, the thing about marled is, when you're putting together your colors, you're like, oh, I need to make sure that they fade or that they're all. You don't because when you pick up your second 
color to add to your first, it's blending it. So even like this one, I have orange and black. I've got this yeah, color impressive. next to this, you know, this color with this color makes this color. Yeah. So and it's a little bit lighter on there, mm -hmm. but, and then this is obsidian. This is my black. And I've got it I mixed with this. I love how that marl's down here. I love it's, the look right. of that so much. So it doesn't, even if, I think her, on her photo, it's like a burgundy. She does a solid burgundy. Mm -hmm. and, but it's like pinks. And I mean, marl does a lot of fun. So it makes it a DK weight because it's two yeah. fingering. I love the feel and of the DK. I do too. And this is on um, my Biscotti sock, which is the 8515 mm. Merino Nylon Superwash. But these are my Starburst Shortcake colors that I've had in my shop for like three years. And it's like years. a gothic-ish type sweater. And it does. I really love it. So I've got, well, I've got ivory as my plain color the at the top mm -hmm. with lemon meringue, orange blossom, purple pie man, and obsidian. A porcupine peak. Right, a porcupine peak. Um, and I did alter a little bit. Like I said, I didn't make the sleeves as belled out. Honestly, I, uh, and I didn't make them as I don't know long. if it's an age thing. I feel like there, there are you so know, many different like age groups where it's like, oh yeah, we fall in between. Cause st okay. Okay. I don't know. Styles a, repeat. I don't know. Style they fashion. Do. They do. Or styles in fashion repeat. And so like the bell, that's more like seventies type. Yes. Isn't it? Um, but well, I feel like there's people the who came out like right at the weird point mm -hmm. of each of these trends where it's like a 20 year difference almost it's so where lovely. it's like I don't like that but I like this so I love the 80s fashion well I'll tell you why because like the bells in the 70s 60s and 70s was bell bottom pants mm -hmm. and then the shirts would be bell but they didn't do this yeah they didn't do the poof cuff. thing yeah this poof thing what is that more um it's like the time when there was the high collars that had the ruffles around the edges oh so and like that the came back oh in the God. 80s with shirts that would fold over with a button. Oh, yeah. Buttons that like went down the, like this, and then it had like a ruffle like the pirate down. shirts or whatever. Not else. really pirate. Um, it was really big, really popular. And they okay. had like the puffed sleeves. And that was also when shoulder pads were in. Yeah. Anyway. Well, those are coming back, and those are going to be in so, my cosplay. But I will tell you, too, it's it's time frame, but it's also, um, I don't know you call it, like different types of uh, groups of people that dress certain ways. So there you've got, I don't know, like in the 90s, it was like the emo crowd. They wore like the black zippy hoodies and black jeans that were skinny jeans. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you might have had someone wearing boot cut jeans with light colors on the top, you know, tight fitting yeah, t-shirts. Yeah, those styles don't. With like a tank top underneath and the tank top would show below oh it. God, Remember oh those days? Oh yeah, I'm yeah. watching a lot of those on Instagram right so, now. So there is right now, one of the styles I think is wearing like the high-waisted jeans, but not the tight high-waisted, more of like the baggy look, but they're still high-waisted. And I always call them mom jeans, because I don't like Mom, that was like four years ago. No. The new style is low rise, which people that's are thinking is low back. rise, but it's not actual low rise. It, well, it if depends on the If you can't see the, the dimples in your butt, that's not a low rise jean. I know that people, okay, I'm just gonna explain this how I see it. I know okay. people say that time frame Decades is when the stuff, but it's actually decades, but it's also groups within the decades. Oh, yeah, no, no. I like I you've got the hipsters. Agree. That's a you know, the hipsters are gonna their style is gonna also evolve at the same time that this other groups does, mm -hmm. but they're gonna be different. So, one of the things is like a baggy upper with like tight shirt under, mm -hmm. even like overalls right now are coming back with oh, I, the, I just bought a couple the pairs. tight, like a we used to call them tube tops mm -hmm. with the baggy, like a baggy uh, overall kind yeah, of top. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, these are kind of its own style, but I don't like the super baggy. Yeah, I'm not a fan right of the big poof on any sweater. I know that's that's been a thing that people really like over the past few years, and I'm like, I just can't get into it. I have to have tight fitting, and usually like nothing on my wrist. I like the tight fitting too, because I otherwise they drive me crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, but these, I, uh, I should have made these just a little bit longer. Yeah, when there's a hair somewhere and you just can't find it. It's there somewhere. Um, and I have big girls up on top. My girls oh. are bigger. So I probably should have made the next size up for... It's always hard for me because I have a tiny under... Like Your my bra cage. size is mm -hmm. small, but the cup size is large. And that's just, just the way just I screwed. am. That's just the way God yeah, made me. Yeah, so you me. always have to change like the arm size. Yeah, the, oh. I always have to make my arm size smaller, the shoulders, and... Uh, Everybody's bodies are just different, and yeah. if you can figure out how to alter patterns, I'd still like That's why I'm trying to put like guidelines and directions in my patterns right now. I'll have to show you guys in my finished objects, but yeah, yeah I'm, I've been like stressing so, trying to figure out how to like 
make it in my own patterns, how you can make it for your own body, because it's not yes. based off a of bus size, even though that's the no. only thing that we have as an indicator to tell people what size to knit. I'm going through that right now with socks, and I'll talk about that later okay, too. Good. But okay, good. What are you wearing? Oh, I took so much time on that, I'm sorry. Th- I'm, I love it though. I absolutely will. and I love the colors you chose because it's like Thank you. you're happy colors and then it's this, this is not normally color. this is not normally what I would wear. That is not normally what I would ever put together. No, me neither. But I just thought I I don't think I've ever made any like Well, I think you picked out like the, the these ones and then colors. you're like I want something else. I think I'm going to put this with it. And I'm like, "Really?" Because I have it's almost like this is my personality, but this is my soul. Yeah. A little dark. Like this is what you see, this is what you don't see. This is right. <laughs> That's true. Um okay, well what I'm working on or not working on what I'm wearing. What are you wearing right now? It's a new pattern. I haven't even really. I don't think I've even like really shown it on Instagram, but I should. You don't have a name for it yet either. Um, oh, I'm debating in between two things because okay. I really want to. I'm planning on releasing a bunch of patterns that are themed after a quarter thorns and roses, and a lot of uh, the works of Sarah J. Mass, which is one of my uh, my favorite authors that I I listen to audio. Isn't that porn? Books every day. It's a form of it. Okay, just kidding. No, it's I just very descriptive, like romance. Steamy romance. That's all it is. But it's um, also fiction. It's fantasy. fairies. Like fantasy type. It's very based. Adult and fantasy. I'm like, I'm like here for that. You're there for it. So I'm debating between two different characters. So it's either going to be named after one, uh, themed after one of the characters named Amran, but it'll be called Tiny Monster sweater. Didn't Elton or John write a song called Tiny? Oh, no, that was Tiny Dancer. You're adorable. You're adorable. Okay, anyway. Um, or it'll be my favorite sweater. So it is a basic, um, oh wait, no, it's not top down. Is it? No, it's bottom up. It is? It's bottom up. Oh my god, oh, I forgot. Uh, it's bottom up. Can I just say, turn to the side, this how you can see your skin through it. I like that. That's I do too. And it's not blocked, so it actually needs to but that, be that's, a bit better. You got some hairs on it. Okay, it's a um, I like how, because yeah. I like the type fitting too. Yeah. Because it's and sexy and feminine. I love it. It's uh, like honestly, flattering. It, it is very flattering. I always <coughs> try to have the sleeves start about right here in a lot of my sweaters when I do bottom up and make the sleeves a little bit more negative ease because it's very flattering to the female body type. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't have to be just like one size to make the sweater look good on you. You have options. <laughs> and so, and I, I like to make all of the majority of my sweaters be like, cookie eating sweaters where cookie uh, eating yeah, what so you have mean? I want a positive ease I You're don't want to shake to everything up. in the body more positive ease in the body so you can you know hide when you're eating cookies <laughs> but I made a very very oh, long positive ribbing. ease up here okay and yeah, I, like, I like when it gathers like that well it won't yeah. gather this is not blocked <laughs> okay so when it's blocked it's going to be more when of it's a, blocked it's going to be like this I had it's going to gonna be like your other sweater that I made what was that called the one that I made at Rhinebeck on the last minute. And, and then you took it all apart? I took it all apart because <laughs> didn't, it didn't fit. <laughs> you didn't what was it? Sanderson. The Sanderson is it's like It's going to fit a lot like that. And I really I like do that. like that because um, this one has a split hem, which is ideal in my opinion. I like this one. Because, yeah, no, I really do. Uh, usually I do, and on this one I did as well, a couple more stitches in the uh, back than in the front. So it kind of like highlights your booty. And then it yes. has more, you have this, I did it in two of them, so I'll show you on this one. Um, but since there's more stitches in the back than the front, a little bit of a line will be brought to the front to give you a horizontal line going up and down. Hold on one second. Okay. You didn't notice that I just got a phone call in the middle. No. Okay, go ahead. So much for airplane mode. I, I know. I weird. have it in airplane mode. That's weird. Um, but so it brings a horizontal, or vertical, sorry, vertical line to your front. So it gives you a, a good line to go off of just with your body shape. So it's very slimming is what I'm trying to get at. That's what you're saying. It's a very like slimming that. idea. It and so you can do these little things here and there in different patterns to make it look better on your body type, style, and size, not just bust size. And that's really what I try to go off of. Um, but I had knit two of them because I originally knit it in I this. I love this. I mean. In a sparkle decay. I mean, I like blues, and the Did sparkle always just makes adds. my eyes look blue. See? They pop. You can't see my eyes, but if you could. They be popping. But you can see how nice it is outside. Popping. Yeah, no, the, the storm's gone. <laughs> um, but I, I knit this in Illyrian, Illyrian wings, and this was going to be my night court sweater, and I took it, that one all apart because you couldn't see the cool cabling that I was starting to do on the sleeves, 
and then so I knit this, it's and I'm so like, pretty. you still can't tell the detail in the sleeves at all. It's so pretty. So I love it. I really do love it. So I'm debating the name of it. Um, one of my favorite features as well is having the raglan decreases come about right here. They end at your collar bone instead of like way back here. Oh, I see. You get what I'm I saying? was looking right here. Yeah. That's, that's the start of the detail. So it also kind of, if, you ha if you're very bussy, it's a narrowing feature. I need that. So it gets rid of like, it creates the illusion of less right here, which is great. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. I need to send it to my tech editor very soon. I knit this in the colorway Vampiric, which I actually just have right here. And it's one of my new autumn colorways. And it's just, it's just moody. And it, it's kind of funny because it has like a pink undertone but you don't really feel that until no, you actually you start don't. knitting with it. It's really, it's I like a it. cherry. It's such a, it's, a, well, it's, it's like, not, a, it's like it's, a, it's a, it's like a, a dark cranberry it's red. It's like a cherry cranberry with a, with a dark soul, with like a yeah. dark hue on it. Yeah, like in a dark lit room. Yeah. With one know. candle by it. Yeah. With blood dripping Just from its it. fangs. Honestly, yeah, probably. Okay. Um, and so I'm really excited. I wanted this to be my Rhymebeck sweater. <laughs> pattern that people could knit up if they wanted to Will but it not be ready in time? there's no way that's gonna happen no because I still need to have it um, tech edited, tech edited, edited. and um, test it. it test it yeah and because my the sizes of my patterns are you know such a wide range um, I'm not gonna put that pressure on my larger women to have it done in like that's one true. month because that's yeah. horrible I usually try to do them around like two months um, even if I want a, f a really fast turnaround time, I want to make sure it fits right first. So, so yeah, so these will probably be coming out in like November, early December. It's really and pretty. Thank you. I have, I have dog hair all over this. Freya wanted yeah, to do makeup yeah. with me this morning. Because you're cute. But oh, you know what? Oh, oh, you yeah. know what? Um, I was just thinking about that. Yeah. You should probably talk about your puppies and what's been going on with that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, we got a new puppy recently Freya to be little besties with Odin. It's kind of sad and magical in a way, the way that we, the, like how it all happened. But for you that have been watching for a while or follow me on Instagram and stuff, you know I'm obsessed with my dogs. And you probably saw that uh, last year, like the day after Christmas, we lost Lulu. She, uh, she'd been struggling for a few days in the uh, veterinarian ICU and yeah, she's just sad. Two years old, and yeah, they're our family. Dogs trying so hard cats. just to like, <laughs> kind of like, overcome. Like, yeah, she passed away. It was really sad, but it's like, it's one of those things that like stick with you for and very, very long time. It just happened so fast. It was, it was crazy. It just happened because so there was fast. no warning signs. But when you're a helicopter parent to your dog and obsessed with them, you can see like the person, like the slight personality changes. And I think that's why we got her in so quickly because they actually discharge us twice, and we're about to I discharge know. her again before she had an episode in front of them. Was and she having seizures? Is that what it was? She was having seizures. That's right. But she didn't have seizures until the night, the final night that they actually accepted her. And so, we, like, I knit her a neck brace and stuff because we're like, oh, maybe she had a collision with Odin and, you know, her neck is just sore and stuff. So I actually took a, a cranked sock tube and I put Velcro on it and stuffed it and, like, even, like, put out portions to make it more sturdy and flat. And so I, like, duplicate stitched through it to sew it. How? Oh, what was she doing that you cute. thought her... She was in pain. Was she like doing something with her neck? Oh. And stuff, and she wouldn't raise her head. That was that's a huge indication. That's even she in, would in not raise humans, her head. Even mm -hmm. in humans, that's an indication. So uh, neurological issues are a big thing with Frenchies, but we weren't really expecting it two years old, and it kind of like emotionally crippled us for a little bit. It does. Yeah. So They're like your children. Yeah, but Odin was just affected. Because dogs what, get depression. What did it end up being? What was it? Meningitis. Meningitis, that's mm -hmm. right. Which they don't know where it could have come from because it could be coming from, like, an infection. It could come from all these different things. But, I mean, she hadn't had surgery recently. Like, there's nothing infected. Um, it could have been hereditary. There's a couple different ways of it, but it was just, it was so fast. And by that night that they actually kept her, it was, like, the next day we were making decisions. And then the following day after that is when. It just happened so fast. Yeah, it was crazy. It was and so I mean, crazy. you're pretty tough. I think uh, even with, like, moms, any kind of nurturing, I feel like... I was, like, the voice of reason and the level head of and one. That's and your anything, personality, Anything too. medical decisions and stuff and having to make hard choices, um, I'm, like, it just turns on. I'm really, I'm really good in a crisis. 
And so I am too. I think you probably get that from me. I, I think run, I do. And I get it from my mom. I think I do. It just runs in our family. Yeah. So I was. Um, that was a lot, but we were actually talking with Odin's breeder throughout all of it because I'm like he couldn't play with her for a little while, like leading up to it and everything. And um, so I texted her. I'm like, hey, can you bring Peaches, his twin sister, because they were born in the same sack? Um, can you bring her by? Can we bring him up? Like he just needs someone to play with. He's been really, really sad. And so she's like, you know, we moved away or whatever. So, but we were in contact with him the whole time. And then when that happened with Lou, just seeing how he was affected when she was just like back and forth to the doctor's offices and, and the hospital and stuff, he was having a really hard time. And then when she passed, like, and just didn't come home, he, he was That's really hard. bad. Yeah. Um, and so I texted her the day after it happened with Lou. I'm like, by the off chance, like we're going to need a very long waiting period. Um, but are you planning on doing any more breeding anytime soon? And she's like, actually, we're starting to get peaches ready for her first litter. And so Freya, our new puppy, is actually Odin's niece from his twin sister. Oh. And she was the only puppy to survive the birth because that was a whole other ordeal with a really bad vet. Um, oh, Because there was two of them that uh. were born. But um, so Freya came out and... Honestly, during the whole process, we were getting, like, pregnancy photos from Peaches. Like, it was adorable. And then when she was born, we, we got, like, a little Easter photo of her with little bunny ears on it and a big old basket of eggs. And they were hilarious. I, I freaking, I love his breeders. But, so we finally got her home, and they are a it, lot. And she's, she's, <laughs> she's so chaos. much more oh rambunctious than Lulu was. Oh, yeah. Lulu was, was just, like, a little sweetie, once-in-a-lifetime kind of dog. And Freya is... But her personality is so much bigger; it's crazy, and it's perfect for Odin. And so yeah. he's been he's been thrilled. He Probably didn't know what to do though at first. Well, he was instantly attached, and he's like, "Oh, is this payback for all the other dogs that I bit when I was tiny?" It's like, "Yes, honey, yes, it is." So she's she's learning things. Um, she's gonna be bigger than him, and he's thirty two pounds. Jeez. She has like those deer legs going on, and oh, just wow. with everything, she's she's gonna be massive. So. We're excited to have her. We're still mourning Lulu because I know you've gone through it too, but losing a pet is so... It's, it's just so, harder than you ever think it would be. Yeah, it's so much harder than you ever would have even thought possible because, I mean, I've lost people in my life, you know, throughout my whole life, and I don't think anything ever hits harder than losing an animal, honestly. Yeah, and I mean, of course, for us parents, children, but you, I think we all deal with when you grow up and you become an adult and you get older and older, you expect that someday people are going to die. Mm -hmm. But when it's a child, that's what it feels like for you because you don't have children and yeah. these were your children. So it's like, it's just yeah, devastating. Yeah, go to work with us every day. Like They're your companions. You They depend on you. You depend on our them. Our house is modified for them, not the other way around. Yeah. You know, and, and, yeah. Yeah, it can be hard. So, but... Yeah, just wanted to give you guys an update because probably won't be talking about Lou anymore and introduce you guys to Freya. Um, and she's... She's cute. She's adorable. She's like a muted version of Odin because his coloring is like fox color and she's like oatmeal. But they look wow. the same except for her bottom jaw, like just out like yeah, that. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I'm like, you that look is... like a dork fish. And she's yeah, like, oh, that's so grumpy. Because there are fish that look like that. I know. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, so she's adorable. Um... So, yeah, I'll have to share photos or whatnot. But, yeah. So, that's my sweater I finished. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's see. We should, we should probably talk about things that we're making. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, because you have something on your needles. I do. I'm actually working on some just socks. I like just to make socks. socks. I like making socks. You are um, so good at finding, like, basic stitches to create an intriguing pattern. I like to put together things... I have books and books on patterns, mm -hmm. on, like, sock, not patterns like sock patterns, but, like, stitch patterns, mm -hmm. you know, different stitches. And so I like to take several of those and put them together and make them into their own little stitch. Yeah. And whatever. we all do it. That's all designing is. That is. It is. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I just decided to make some basic, these are kind of a shorty, but a little bit higher, so like a little above ankle and That's your size. Yarn. This is my self stripe. Which I started. I'll talk about that. In God, a minute, I'm but. still I'm still in the camp of I will not touch that with a ten foot pole. But good for you. It is a lot of work, and I've said this before. I've said it on Instagram. I think I've said it on podcasts. Self striping yarn dyers are the warriors. 
Oh yeah, and they, they do the not get paid warriors. enough. We need to be we need to be paying them more for their yarn. I'm not gonna lie. They're Holy the ones crap. that are they're in it because they love it. I'll tell you. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it's it's a lot of work, and you have to have a damn good process to make it uh, worth it. And you've got to have help. If you're the only person doing it all, unless there's a like magical thing, like yeah. Unless there's a, even even having, I feel like I have some pretty good tools. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still one skein at a time. I mean, you can dye if you've got the pots, the whatever. However, you do, there's different ways people do them. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've got enough to make, you know, eight or ten or whatever, you still have to wind yeah, them into no. those big mm-hmm. schemes. No, thank you. You can purchase the long skeins, but they're not long enough for several no, stripes. No, So you have to make it's your for, own. For several rows per stripe is what you mean. And I've seen, yeah, and I've seen Dyer too. Their husbands are the ones that wind the yarn into the long skeins. And I'm, I'm, I have a process that I feel like is pretty fast uh, for that. Just because I'm a bitch that way. I'm <clears> sorry. <throat> if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it and do it and do it until I find the most effective, oh, efficient, yeah. fastest way to do it. Even if nobody else is doing it that way. And that's not being a bitch. That's being innovative. And well, just it's, being... It's relentless. I'm relentless. Yeah, you and really are. And I mean, I, some days I'm just like, okay, this isn't working for me. I've got to figure something else out. So I'm not doing that again. my process I found is pretty good, but it's still not worth it for me to do a lot of self-striping yeah. yarn. Um, and it's just, anyway. that's so unfortunate though, because I love your color combination. Thank you. I, it, like you've, you've really good eye for that. It's hard to find color combos too, especially minor. I've got some that are four stripes and then these ones are six i have this one that's six i did just wind off some eight ones okay i can do eight but my gosh i don't know 24 people that do the no actually a lot of them will do i know freckled whimsy does 12 but then she doubles it so it's it repeats okay so you're doing 12 and then 12 or no maybe no 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 it is 24 colors no and well no how did no she said you do you, you do two stripes a day and I don't remember. I just know that she had to put out a, a, a post saying the color does repeat. Um, mm. But even doing 12, even if it was 12 and 12, but I know some do 24 colors. I don't yeah, know no, how. Because there's no pot big enough to put all your jars in if you're doing the that jar version. So I don't do the much. jar version. I have a different way. In fact, I might make some videos to show everybody. I think it would be cool. I think it's always fun to see everyone's like different processes because... Yeah. We all do it differently. We all think we're doing it the same, but we pretty much all do it differently. I think all of us in our family do oh, it differently. Oh, yeah, no, we all do, do things it. differently. Oh, yeah. But what are you knitting on? I, uh, I cast, okay, you guys are being very impressed. I cast the sock on so that I had something to knit on during this. Um, so while we were, like, prepping everything, I cast on the, the brim, the... Cuff? The cuff. I'm <laughs> like, the ribbing. Um, and this is just, I have a little mini that's mine. It's oxidized pumpkin. And then this is... Hmm, falling. This is um, a cell striping from Nomadic Yarns, and I love her stuff. She is so good. Ashley is. She's very talented. She she picks a lot of things from like um, pop culture and uh, like TV. Like okay, yeah, that's pop culture. But I think this one's Coraline based. I have most of her collection, if not twice. And she has some Nightmare Before Christmas one. So right now, like honestly, when I think of fall, like when I start to get in the mood, it's usually. When she starts pulling out and doing her October colors, mm-hmm. and I get so excited because yeah, I love her Coraline ones, and I think this is one of them. And then she's done Sally a couple times, and I think I have like five skeins of that, <laughs> just so that really? I have it on hand. Yeah, because I kind of want to do like sock, a sock arm oh, sweater that would be type so thing. Fun. Um, but also I just want to have it on hand because I know eventually I'm gonna make myself a pair. And I know because it takes so long to do self striping, you're not guaranteed that that color is always going to be around. Right. It, and yeah. so I have quite a few of the Sally ones. And I think to each of Miss Fink and Miss Forcible from Coraline. But yeah, so this is from Nomadic Yarns and I love her stuff. So this is just going to be a basic, uh, basic vanilla sock, which is really nice because <clears throat> like while we're doing podcasting, recording or anything that's like I have to kind of be really present I have a really hard time with that riding in a car yeah paying attention going to classes um I knit all knit and crochet all my way through college um well you're I I knit every day during my meals yeah yeah you just need something basic to work on but if you were like me and mom who have ADHD it really does help you focus and stay present 
and um, giving your hands something to do is like focusing the extra bits of your brain on this task in your subconscious so that your conscious mind can actually just stay in the present. And so that's really why I love having, even though I don't wear them a ton, I'm going to have a ton of gift knits now with all these socks that I've been working on recently. Well, and I'm on the mission on a mission to make the perfectly fitting socks. And you're getting there. Well, I am. By the way, this is called Summer Fling. Yeah, I'm like, I don't even... In my shop. And this pattern is just what I'm doing. I, it's, well, what did you do? I just cast on my... Nor I usually do between 56 these and are bumpy. 60. Yeah, this is just regular ribbing. And when I do, like, anything bumpy or anything that's going to have knit, knits and pearls in it, um, I always make the smaller... I make 56, so I'm a size 6 shoe. So I, mm -hmm. I cast on 56. And then I just... I knit two rows and then do knit pearl for two rows that's it but oh. look at the effect and it happens to just correspond really well with my stripes i don't know i didn't plan that, that worked out really well but yeah um if i'm doing like um color work or if i'm doing anything with cables oh yeah i do a 60 if i'm doing a color work or slip stitch sometimes i'll even do 64 yeah because that and doesn't you, it doesn't stretch oh you really have to yeah it doesn't stretch much at all yeah, you have to play with that. And where you're carrying floats as well. Yes. And like with cables, how it pulls it in tight. It does. You yeah. really have to go up size or so. Because, yeah, yeah I, I've made color work socks in the past and I can't get them past my heel. And, you know, that's one thing. If it's going to be super tight, it's usually either the ribbing or it's that part of the heel. So, real quick, this wasn't planned. I'm not, I'm just going to throw oh. this out there. I'm, gonna okay. throw, I'm going off script. If you find very, very that your tight. socks are a little tight in the heel area, when you're doing your heel, now this for heel flap and gusset, here's just a trick. Heel flap and gusset, if that's your sock type that you do, your heel type, um, knit your flap a little bit longer mm -hmm. so that you can pick up more stitches down the sides. Oh. So if you normally pick up 16 stitches, make uh, like two to four extra rows and pick up 18 because it'll take longer for you to mm. close your instep. That Ooh. makes your instep taller. Okay. And that'll make it fit over your heel better, but it doesn't really I make a difference. Very often. Yeah. I but I run into this problem. If you do yeah. the afterthought heel, knit in the round four to five, six times before you start your decreases, and that makes oh. your, it stick out longer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Just I've never found that found that an afterthought heel or a cut in heel or whatever you want to call it. Um I've never found that those fit very well, but it's probably because I just like I just took round. I just took no, no on this one. I I had the cut in heel. Okay. Or not? It wasn't. It was an afterthought heel. Yeah, yeah. I had it. I took it out. Yeah. I, I just I just don't like the. I I don't think they fit as well. I haven't figured. I haven't done enough to figure out how to make it fit me mm. in the best way. Yeah, I do like a good heel flap and gusset. I also like the German short short row heel. Yeah, that one's a good lot. too. I haven't. I've only made that the one time we did it with Mina Phillips in okay. my class. And she had her own like style of doing it mm -hmm. too. She had her own version. And I think yep. she made her flat ish panel a little bit longer. I can't remember. I don't remember either. Um, but it was a good class. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that I was like, a, I liked learning a new heel. I have a hard time, like, I always have great intentions. Be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take a class. And then I'm like, it's really early, though. No, I'm going to, well, let's just pretend I would love like to try to did. do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, so anyway, a vanilla sock is a great thing to have. Or I call these not so vanilla. Yeah. Or almost vanillas. Because um, it's really an easy pattern. Yeah, and I it's fun to, right. it is, but like color work and stuff, it's great to have something that's a little bit more intricate too, um, just to actually like dive into. I know a lot of patterns out there, they're very straightforward ones, basic, beginner friendly, but when you can get to a point where you can do something a little bit more advanced, I just love new, learning new things and new ways to do things. Yep. And so I, I save those for when I'm like coming home at the end of the night and just kind of want to focus on one thing and nothing else around me. Yep. But when I go to the yep. movies or whatnot, I always uh, take a vanilla sock with me. Yep. Even yep. though I have lost a needle in the theater before. I have on the airplane. During a really quiet part of the movie, and it just... That's the best thing ever. All the way down. I'm like, Wait, have, were you with me on the plane when I had my yarn in a little ball, and it went underneath a bunch of the seats in front yes! of me? Yes! And needles. I've done that with needles, I too. have been Cable there to needles. pick up your needle. So you're like, I have extra. I'm like, I can get it. Oh, my gosh. It's right there. It went behind me on, the, I think, our last trip. It went down the seat to the guy behind me on his front of his seat. Mm -hmm. 
That's embarrassing. That's what you get for knitting with double pulling needles, which I know. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyways. Um, why don't you talk about your next? Wait. Oh, are you working on something no, else, or should I well, talk about I something? Cast, I we have, we have notes. We have good intentions. <laughs> We're but. great. Um, I, yeah, I have something else. Uh, so I. I listened to the podcast Two Girls, One Ghost on iTunes, and I love them. They just talk about ghost stories, and they're really they're really funny, really cute. And I got my little sister Alaska into it as well, and right. they're actually coming to Utah uh, for a show in September. And I'm going to be one of those really creepy fangirls who makes them something. And they're like, <laughs> they're like thanks. thanks. No, actually, I think they're, they're going to love it. No, I think you should. Um, I think you totally should. <laughs> but... I told I told Eric and he's like you know that's creepy right I'm like absolutely uh, yeah I do actually absolutely I'm I'm pretty excited about it though because we'll be friends in my you guys in will my be friends head. forever oh my god I really think they're gonna like it um, but they're both of the like girls me. they're gonna like me <laughs> both of the girls really like obviously two girls one ghost they love ghost stories they talk about ghost stories they are both obsessed with one different like cryptid or creature each and one of the girls um, is obsessed with Bigfoot. And so I'm making the Cryptid Cowl by Pacific Knit Co. It's a really cool cowl. Look at that. I'm so happy. So she's obsessed with like Bigfoot. I like Cryptids myself. I and I still have a couple panels left I have to do because Bigfoot's missing. Is it, a, <laughs> is, it a, is it a pick and choose what you want to put where? Yeah. Yeah. And so actually um, she, has a, she has so many cowls actually and she keeps coming out with more. And all of that the cowls cow. kind of like come to the same stitch count. And so you can pick and choose across the different cowl patterns as well as like the different options within each pattern itself, which is so great. And so I actually picked apart a couple of different ones um, to create this. So I think this is technically her Seattle. That is such cowl. my cows that I've designed or made for myself are like they're like so much smaller. This is a big, nice, I love chunky, it. I love it. Comfy looking. And so if you guys want to see my floats, are they impressive? So, so bad. No, they're not. Oh, look. I mean, okay, my duplicate stitch. Look at my duplicate stitch. Oh, is it a, is that what you do is duplicate stitches? You don't have to, but I did. I'm like, I'm not messing with three colors. I'm all about duplicate stitch. Um, but I did a horrendous job. And so I'm probably going to get like some fleece and sew it. (laughs) Well, no one's going to see the inside though. They will. They will. I'm not wearing it. Who is it? I'm making it for the podcasters. (laughs) So I think I might take some fleece because I think this girl is up in, um, like Virginia area, so it can get kind of cold. So I think I'm gonna line this one. For I mean, sure. it depends on how much time you want to spend on it. You could pick up stitches on the inside and just I don't want to line there. I thought about that. And I'm like using extra bulky. Oh my god. Just kidding. Or uh, or uh, Surrey. Surrey would be, the, but mm-hmm. that's kind of see throughish, isn't it? Yeah, but you're just doing an inside panel. True. So you can tat it in. Just tell them not to look at the inside. Just kind of look at it. Um, so I'm in the process of doing that. I'm almost done. I like it. And then I, on along the same vein, so I think this is technically the Seattle cowl because this panel of Bigfoot is a lot smaller. And in the cryptic cowl, it's basically like the full like height of all these panels put together. And there's coffee cups, and uh, Seattle happens to be the home of Starbucks. where Starbucks started. Mm-hmm. But I'm working on the second one because the girl in question, the podcaster in question, loves aliens. And so I'm actually taking part of portions of the pattern, I guess. I don't want to give anything away of her pattern. Oh, okay. I'm creating an alien spaceship in it. Don't look at everything but else. But you used her. <laughs> but I kind of, I, I used some of her mountains from one of them, so it's still technically the cryptic cow. Um, and I'm changing out a lot of it, I think. Of oh, just the, the, the... The colors. Oh. Because I don't love this. So I think I'm just going to make the background, instead of this gray, I'm just going to make it all the same black color. And then this color right here is vampiric again. And I'm going to switch it out Why for Barbie like Girl it? and have it vibrant and, wa- and bright pink. That'll be fun. Because the alien, um, the little beam me up Scotty is going to be in this color, which perfect. is, uh, what color is this? Tink. That's a perfect tink. I know, right? And this is Moonbeam. And then, yeah, I'm going to dye up a uh, Barbie girl, which is just stupid pink. This Very, pink. very <laughs> shocking pink. Yeah. So I'm going to do that and fix it that way. So this panel is actually going to be a lot longer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up all these stitches right here and then cut it. And I'm going to pull all of this out and then knit from this side backwards. And then close the cowl that way. 
But yeah, this is going to have a lot of floats in it too. Because I think creative. it's going to be across, like you can already see the base of where the beam me up is going to be mm -hmm. right here. And it's like 21 to 23 stitches across. So that's where I'm going to be That's so crazy that it's too. all duplicate. So you can do color work or duplicate. Well, hers doesn't have a spaceship in it. I know, but I'm just saying her but pattern is set up to do either. You can. I mean, I'm just choosing. Or I'm just making just, a choice. I mean, you chose to do over stitching. It's not. She doesn't say in the pattern you can do. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. Does it say anything? But I'm like, okay. I don't want to have to carry three yarn at I the same time. You. That's what I really just don't want to do that. I mean, who writes patterns that carries three? This girl right here. I'm a masochist. Yeah. Um, but it's usually only across like three lines, not an entire cryptid. True, so true, because that's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, but my main color, I didn't mean show. Nope, that's not it. it. I have a lot of problems and they're all in this bag. Yes, they are. Is my colorway Mary, which is based off of Lord of the Rings. And it's dark in here, by the it. way. I think it's coming across really, it, really well, though. I can't, I can't tell what colors there are in it. Is it browns it's and like blacks? It's like the best kind of brews. So it has like mauve in it, it has um, espresso bean in it, That's one of the pretty. dyes, and so it, it comes across as like the perfect purple bruise. Love it. Um, it has some like silver gray type in it, blacks, browns, like you name it. It's pretty. In that moody spectrum. It's it's one of my favorite colors, but it's, it's hard to photograph. And so I, I don't like think a lot too. of people like know how good of a color it is. And yeah, I have a couple colors like that. That one in Atlas. That is that like I the live. struggle of my life. And so it's like, I have a ton of it in the shop because I know I love it and I'm going to knit with it. And so if no one buys it, I still am going to knit with it. But yeah, I, I think that's why it's been in the shop for a minute because it is get one of the across. best colors. I'm not going to lie. You can't get across how awesome it is. I know, right? Is it my turn to show something? It's your turn. And then I have one left, okay. but it's the best thing in the world. Um, I'm going to show two things real quick just okay. because they're fast. Okay. Um, I used my summer fling to also make another kind of sock. This one's a slip stitch sock with self stripe. I'm into that. I'm into self striping with, you know, like a base color and doing designs. But so well, it's just you need to find some other way to use self striping. Yes, it's still socks, but yes, it's yes. fun. Yeah, and so I just did slip stitch, but the bottom I did a little different. I might write this up. I mean, I want to knit that, but at the same time, and I did my cool little diamond heel, which is hard to explain. I have to show you. Um, but yeah, that's just something I wanted to do with my self-striping. I just did, it's almost like little bricks. It reminds me of uh, Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, like little bricks. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, so that's one sock. But um, it, Ralph. I wanted to show a sock that I made for Tristan for her birthday that I've had to take apart a couple times. And I'm so happy. Because I'm just trying to size it perfectly. perfectly and cater perfectly. to my specific needs. Yes. I used another one of my self-striping socks. This one's called Hayride. And it's more of an autumn color. Of course it is. The teal on the heels, toes, and cuff, the heel, toe, and cuff is called Blue Water Breeze. That's that's not part of the stripes. Okay. So that's separate. But the cool thing I about love, this, I love the construction of this talk. I'm so Okay. Um, after years and years of listening to Trista complain bitch and mom. about how walking on needs. on uh, knitted socks, you can sometimes, it kind of hurts your the ball of your foot because it, I don't know why. It doesn't hurt mine, so I, you, I can feel each and every individual stitch. It's like, yeah, the like the pearl side is what you're feeling, right? Yeah. So I thought, hmm. And I've had people be like, oh, then just do the bottom all pearl. And I'm like, pearls catch on things as well. So it's like, yeah, mm. it's it's almost like the, it's the thinness because you're And feeling, your gauge is going to change because you're switching yeah. it out and pearling it. Just, mm. You'd still feel the pearls because. You would feel the pearls. Yeah. Um, so what I did is I figured out a way to make a a padded sole on the ball. So this is double thick. Um, and it wasn't just knitting a, a tube and sticking it in there and sewing it on. Mm -hmm. I actually have a way to do it where you, it's just part of the pattern. You just knit, I'll have to, I'm gonna write that up, that part I'm of really it up someday. That. It's not that hard, but it's, it's just, just it's hard extra. to write. I'm not going to lie. It's hard to feel motivated to write a pattern after you're done with it. It is. You just kind of want to show it off and people well, to just instantly know how to do it. I guess I could type it up as I'm going, but I usually write it down as I'm going. Oh, it's yeah, just no, transferring I, it from my chicken We scratch. all know my problem with keeping like eight different notebooks for one design. Right. So I thought I'd make this and, and have Tr Tristan test it out because 
she's standing then on the knit stitches, mm -hmm. but on the other side. So all the pearls are inside. Keep creating between, a squish factor. Yeah, between the knit side. So your I love that. Her foot will only fill the knit side, but then it's got that extra layer in there. And it's a little bit extra warm. And you could actually continue it mm -hmm. all the way up. To, like, I was a dancer growing up and keeping the arches oh of God. your feet warm. Yeah, keeping them warm or even just mm -hmm. like a type of compression socks. Because I know this, a lot of people with diabetes do that. have that issue. Well, and you can make this pattern to where you can make the double layer mm -hmm. without the toe. And, I oh, mean, true, I don't know huh? about the heel. You probably still need the heel. I mean, there's probably a way you could do it without the I heel. I mean, if you're doing like no. leg warmers, foot warmers, whatever. Yeah, you could do that way. But I mean, there is a way, just the way it's already done, where if you eliminate one step, you wouldn't have the toe. You would just have it all the way there. But anyway, that's a great way to make fingering weight socks and make them warmer for winter and more padded. I okay, I'm not the only one. I know I've had people not. tell me recently. I know, I know you're like, not. oh yeah, my my feet too. Yeah, some people's feet are like, a little yeah, more sensitive. It sure. Yeah. But the thing is I can wear DK weight socks. I can too. I like those. Yeah, they're squishy, they're comfy. It's just You can't thing, or you can't? I can. Oh, okay. Because they're, they're thicker. Squishy probably. and comfy. Yeah, they're thicker. I don't, I don't Well, but know. the finger weight, the, the pearl, it's tighter. It's a tighter little ball sticking there. Little balls than are stupid. Balls are stupid. <laughs> balls are so stupid. Anyway. But yeah, I'm excited, and I would love for you to write those up. And I know it takes a minute to, it does. to get ideas from paper, or I from know, your brain to paper, to the computer, to test knitters, and it is a whole process. I, I told someone uh, fairly recently, I'm like, I generally schedule about eight hours when I'm even just picking testers. I've already for worked patterns. on a pattern I'll show you in a minute. Mm -hmm. Just the writing oh up of it God, yeah. for more than two days. Okay. Well, let me finish but this yeah, last one. You go ahead I'll, and show. Because I'm so excited about this one. Okay. So, um, another you know, within the theme of A Court of Thorns and Roses. This one's so big, it's in its own the travel bag, bag. Basically, I have these in the shop. These are my, uh, they're nice, super size knitting bags, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I love them. I love them so much. They're but, so cute. And, and they do fit handy. everything in there. It's like a bag for all of your knitting bags if you go on a trip. It is. Or it's this giant pattern, bag. which is a lot, and I'm very excited. Um, so in A Court of Thorns and Roses, in the second book, there is an iconic scene that's in Chapter 55. So this is my Chapter 55 sweater. And in it, the main character, Feyre, she's wearing this beautiful um, cream-colored oversized fit sweater with like a pair of leggings and that's it and she's like covered in paint and stuff um but I'm making the sweater and I also want to ideally make some knee-high socks that are DK and Surrey put together Ooh, Surrey. So it's so soft and squishy because my Erin weight is BFL and so I wanted I wanted a squish factor and a comfort factor that you could have next to skin if you wanted to um and this is what I come out with so far I'm so excited this is the socks? No, this is the sweater. Okay. <laughs> the socks. Can you imagine a whole bag for a pair of socks? I'm like, that's, like that. those I'm are like, some big ass damn. socks, girlfriend. It's like, no, really, they're pants now. Yeah. Um, so I am in the process of, I just started the first Oh my God. I, I know, you haven't seen this yet. I'm so I have it. So this is. Holy shit. The sweater so Look far. Look at that. <laughs> I'm so happy. I love the back. It's a split hem. That split is hem, more stitches in front or in okay, back so again. This is your, is it your Aran weight? Mm -hmm. Is it doubled? Or no, it's Aran and Surrey held together. Oh my goodness. I knit it on, I think it's going to be on size 10 needles for the most of it. And then the, the brim is going to be on size 8. This reminds me of Ireland. There are sweaters. <laughs> These are like the Aran sweaters mm -hmm. that you can find everywhere in Ireland. They're probably not handmade. They're probably machine made. This is a better. A lot of them are. This is better. Yeah, I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. How um, long? Was it quick? It's, actually, so it's crazy. It's actually really quick. I want to make this one. You would think it would like take forever. I keep being worried because I haven't blocked the body. Because I'm so like, no, I just want the extra, sleeve. Extra, it might be really, really, really big. Um, yeah, because it's going to stretch. Well, B it's, no, BFL is really good about but that. But the thing is, this is heavy. It is heavy, but BFL is great. It doesn't, it doesn't like overstretch like Marina does. No, I, I know that. But it is so super good. wash BFL. Yeah. But That's fine. I I made I designed my sweater in BFL and it didn't overstretch. I'm so happy. So. I'm so happy with it. But the sleeves are going to be um, either like two fit or a little bit negative ease by like an inch. But so I had to take them off and recast them on. So I'm. It's so. I cool. just have a couple of live stitches on. Well, they're not live at all actually. But so I, it's oh, bottom up, them up and then you connect for in the round knitting. Kind of looks good as a sleeveless sweater too. You're not wrong. 
<laughs> I like it without the sleeves. It's like a vesty vest kind of a. If it was small, a smaller size, I think I would probably wear it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first sweater I have done short row shaping in shoulders alone, because you separate front and back when you get oh, to the so armhole, mm -hmm. and so you knit the. I knit the back first, and I did short rows across with the shoulders with major cables. With major cables, but oh, wow. I'm a nice person. And you do like the cable side, and then you do the shorter stuff on the other side. Okay, and you that's do the cable good. side, and then the shorter good. stuff on the other side. Because, yeah. yeah, that would be awful. Yeah. Um, and it's only a couple rows of short rows, anyways. And, uh, and yeah, so I, I'm really excited. I, I tried really it on, and it fit really cute. Um, with and leggings, that would be exactly. so cute. And so when I released the pattern, if you buy the sweater, I, I want to just like put the socks in there as well. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be taking the pattern photos with me in black leggings, basically. That is going to be so cute. I'm so excited. Um, but so it is intricate cables for the... I say intricate cables, but honestly, anyone can knit cables. I think that was like the third knit. Uh, the third thing I ever knit was putting a random cable in a beanie. Because you told me over the phone how to do it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah. So cables are only as hard as you think they are. But reading them on a chart can be tricky if you don't know necessarily They're what not, you're doing. You're not... They're not a new stitch. You're still knitting no. and curling. Yeah, no. And Just there the should be, like, no decreases here in the body or anything. Um, so that's great. But so you have this big old cable up front. Mm -hmm. And then if you knit my Sanderson sweater, it's just, like, the knit and purl section yep. right here. Mm -hmm. A little basic cable. Little the Sanderson twist, knit. Twist mm -hmm. And then the opposite direction there. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. It's really pretty. I'm really excited. So It's really nice. The Yeah. It's I, huge. It's so big. <laughs> and I'm going to have to remember how many uh, skeins I put in here. So I think so far, I think I'm on number five of the Aran weight. And this is as much as I've gotten so far. What you do is you, you just weigh a skein. I know. My scale is like this big. And so I don't oh, know you have with weighing this here. thing. No, you, you, just, you just weigh. Yeah. Yeah. You get my dilemma? Yeah. So we'll see. I think I'm on the fifth skein here. I don't even have a big scale and, borrow. Well, I just opened my third skein of Surrey. And so it takes two skeins of my Aran weight to one Surrey, just yardage-wise. Mm -hmm. So I think I just did my fifth one. Sorry. And I'm, I'm not That's... alternating skeins because it's just a very basic. Uh, the main colorway is an heirloom. And then uh, the Surrey is in feather. So it's just very lightweight speckling I and stuff. It. So I didn't end up actually having to alternate skeins or anything. Um yeah, I'm so happy. It feels so squishy, huh? It's really nice for being BFL because BFL oh can God. be a little scratchy. Yeah, it softens. And it I up. know that's a that's a concern uh, that a lot of people would have with it, but mm -hmm, so I but wanted to get the squish factor. It so. way softens it up. It's really nice. Yeah, I want this one to be released in December as well, so I will that's be probably one. having good two test knits going on at the same time. But I think everyone's going to want to cast it on for winter. I think that's awesome. So I'm excited. Yeah, that's the last thing I'm actually working on right now. That's awesome. I lost my sock. We can talk about a couple. Well, I guess. Well, I want like, to talk about your socks. Oh. I kind of already have been showing my finished objects. No, your your these spiders. Were, these were finished. But my spider socks. I guess I do have. I'm still in the process of making one, but I do have one finished. Um, so I designed a sock. <laughs> And it's so good. I like it. I do. Um, I'll show you what it looks but like. You're finished. mad at it? It's hard to write up. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I sometimes that's the beauty of being able to figure out how to how to knit up your own stuff. It's the problem comes is when your brilliant idea is hard to put on paper. It's hard to translate across into different, different sizes. sizes. Too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I made this it's called and a, a, a somebody on Instagram helped me figure out the name for it. It's a rack arachnophobia Arachno Arach arachnotobia that's what it is the arachnotobia because so here's the heel this is the back of the sock so it's got a different pattern here and then a different pattern here and then you've got your spider and i actually have a a checkered board here so that's three four charts mm -hmm. right there and then the front is my spiders i love that and I had a couple of people say, why Why is it different on the front and the back? And I'll tell you why. Because that's the only way you can make any kind of pat design you want without having to figure out how to get it to go all the way around the sock in the right number of stitches oh, for all right. sizes. I, for I forgot I actually have. Yes, you do. 
So I decided, because I really wanted to put these spiders on, because look at that. This is my I own. I made this spider up. This is my spider. And I wanted it on a sock, but I couldn't figure out how to, because it's like 20-some stitches across. Mm -hmm. that, you can't fit that in all the sizes. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just put, you know, different patterns on the back and on the bottom and... That's what I did. And everybody wants it so much. I know. And I have it up. It's like I want everybody to know I've been working my butt off trying to write it. And hey, you took like two full days off of work this week. I did trying to write. Just I am making all the I wanted to be, figure out a way to make one chart for each pattern part and then just figure out how everybody can see their size. But it's, I'm, that's not going to be as easy as it sounds. Yeah. So I'm going to have to make it's going to be like a lengthy looking pattern with lots of pages. Mm -hmm. But it'll just be a different size for the charts on each page. But so that's the the arachnotobia socks and i'm using my own self-striping which is pumpkin party which is this one this was the first one that i made this year so it's all the like fall halloween colors and i put that into this sock and i'm just really happy with it and then the the main color is uh cocoa just a light color and then i decided to make a short pair and so i started doing it on uh, with a black background and black is hard for some people mm -hmm. to knit but this is just like an ankle size sock and uh, I actually did it while I was right while I was trying to type up the pattern just to help me remember you know any all the patterny stuff yeah so I'm working on that and hopefully that'll come out soon um I'm gonna try to get it done and um all the testing done in the next couple weeks We'll see how that goes. I'll test it for you. I know you will. I will totally test I've it. Had, for I've you. had lots of volunteers. I've got a lot. I've already got some people chosen. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. No, you can do it too. <laughs> you can. But no, I totally get what you're saying with, um, like putting one pattern on the front and the other on the back, though. Because yeah, it's just like they do with mittens. Yeah. You know, like what do they call those Norwegian mittens? Mm -hmm. And you've made some really cute mitts that you brought to show. Yeah, yeah actually. Um, and you've done. Did you do the same thing with the pattern? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, okay. it first was just down to ignorance because I didn't know any different. And now it's actually my preferred way because I want to carry yarn across. And it's the same with like the thumb and stuff. I want color work on the thumb as well because you don't have the the chance of like having a bunch of like really tight stitches in the thumb area. Mm -hmm. Even though that's not my problem on these ones. I actually have to redo these ones. But along the same vein because I want to do a year-long knit-along Mm -hmm. Court of Thorns and Roses theme that would be, next year. That's ambitious. Starting in January. I know. So I want to release a bunch of a Court of Thorns and Roses patterns. And so um, I knit these up a little while ago, and I want to change, like, everything about them almost. But not not the design. <laughs> the pattern um, is cute, though. The, yeah, I'm really the, excited. So the these are my work. Autumn Court gloves. They are so cute. The thumbs are just, like, insanely big. I love the palms. The zigzag. Exactly. Nice. So it just makes it so I can carry the yarn across and um, just have more of a seamless, like, not puckering, not right. having to worry about any of that as much. And, yeah, the color changes are very small across these, not necessarily across the front, though. And so, or the top of the, the hand. So I wanted to have something a little simple on the palm. I like it. That are still a little festive for fall. But, yeah, I'm going to change it out a little bit. I think I'm going to have this one be a fold over. And I need to change the thumb because, yeah, it's just, it's just, like, little baggy. It looks malformed. I look malformed. Okay. <laughs> so, and I will have a couple different sizes. So it will, it does, it is nice to have this knit up. So I know this is probably going to be the largest size. Great. Now I know where to work from there because that was the first set I did. And then I started <laughs> making some night court gloves, but my mountain does not look like a mountain. It looks like a flame from the Olympics. But do you know how to change it? Like, have you already? I have with some it? ideas of how I want to do it. So it's not going to take a lot for me to change it up. But I'm going to have all of these or these two patterns at Woolen Folk. I'm going to be That'll releasing be nice. them there. And the thumbs, as you can see, are not malformed. So nope, nope, I know where great. to go. I know where to go from there. Um, and then yeah, I just have a little seed type stitch on the palm. On the palm, and then the thumbs. I I do love having the having these in my gloves. I think that looks really cool. I love it. And yeah, you don't have to carry yarn across as much. Uh, the picking up for the thumb is different because I do it actually all right here. And I know a lot of people do it on the, the sides right mm -hmm. here for gloves. And yeah, I do it all up the middle right there. I like it. Um, 
And it's the same as my burrow mitts that I came out with years and years ago. I have it. You made me a pair, I think. They're my favorite gloves. Those they're are, really, like, so well fitted. They're really cool. So, yeah. So, I need to change a couple things on both of these. So, these will be taken apart. I'll be releasing them during the weekend of Woolen Folk. And I will have some kits. But, yeah. No, it's it's tricky. Numbers. Numbers are math. complicated when it comes to color work. It is. So it's not something you can necessarily fudge because everybody will see it. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, that's a problem. But yeah, I'm excited about these, but I will be taking them apart and reformatting basically everything. Yep, that's what you got to do sometimes. Yeah, so. I've but done I'm, that. I'm so glad though, because I'm like, oh, I wonder if nobody actually wanted these. Because I said I was going to release them on the 10th, and I just never did, and no one said anything. People don't remember. And I'm so glad they don't. They don't remember. I, I've done the same thing on a couple so. things, and they just don't remember. Well, I only mentioned it once as well, so I'm like, oh, I'm just going to retract that. Yeah. Redo it all. And release it. Well, you're the boss. In a few months. So I'm excited about these. But I want to do one for each of the quartz. And then, yeah, all the sweaters I have coming. So it'll be a fun year-long knit along. And I'll be doing that on Instagram. So. Cool. I'll, I'll talk about that way later. Yeah. Okay. Um, so can we talk about some obsessions? Yes, because I'm so ex Okay, I'm so excited for you. I'm so glad that you got, like, bit by the bug, drank the Kool-Aid. Like, yes. I'm so excited. It took me a minute to get into it, but... I'm now, I'm loving it now that I'm, I'm just not into, I'm just not creative enough to do like my own little, we're talking about polymer clay. I'm not a sculptor. Oh no, I'm Jeez. not. Jeez. I'm not a sculptor. I'm not but a sculptor. making polymer clay has been so much fun and it's been such an outlet on days you just, you know, my hands sometimes can't handle doing Yeah, I was going to say your body yarn. breaks down. Yeah. And I mean, I don't have anything to show because I've mostly been making things to put in like my boxes, my mm -hmm. advents and mix mystery boxes and stuff. But you've got some cute stuff. You should show yours. Yeah, because and I all... actually, I have a bunch for you. For sure. me? Well, no. I Well, like, what yeah. What do you mean? I, you gave so me some I already. use I use clay cutters and it's basically like cookie cutters, but me like too. that big. Little tiny. And it honestly is like a cheating way to make really, really cute stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I remember I tried doing Palmer clay the first year that I started dyeing yarn, like at the same time. Were you trying to sculpt it? Like, yeah, be a and sculptor? I am so bad. It was so bad. There's some like, good people out there that do sculpting. Off. Oh, I know. I'm just I know. Of them. And they're just talented and it's amazing and I applaud you. But I have to cheat and or find the, the simplest method for me because yeah, I love stitch markers. I know we all have that obsession. And so I've been making some of them recently. And so I have some cutters for you that I need to bring by that I absolutely Oh, that's forgot. right. That's right. But um, instead of just doing like stitch marker by stitch marker, which I've been doing for the past like year or so, um, for fall, I wanted to come up with a bunch of like little sets. And since you're buying multiple, like in one set, they're a little bit cheaper. Um, but just so I can mass produce them a little bit more so than I was with each individual one. But even though you're mass producing and you're using cutters, you do a lot of detail stuff. I on do it. do a and lot of detail. And they still take so long, even if you're using cutters and you're just keeping them plain. Yeah. They take a long time. But if it's like so if you're putting all of those into it, you can just bundle them into one, so it's a lot easier. So I've been doing little fall themed stitch markers. So cute. I love like them. them around. So each of these sets that I have right here, I know the one I gave you only has four, but these all have five. So you got like little um, leaves and stuff in them, and they all have a center charm, which is a sweater for these few. I've been obsessed with these little leaves, though. They're this so one's my cute. most popular. It's the sunflower one. So I've been selling a bunch of these this last week, and I love it. I love this little acorn. I think I'm getting the acorn in. Okay. Uh, maybe. Have to look. And this last one, I absolutely love these colors, and I just barely put this in, but this is a little pumpkin spice latte, but the colors are just very, very fall vibrant. I love that. So these, that's just kind of like a little peek, but yeah, polymer clay is just, it's just such a great outlet creatively, but then also um, it uses your, your muscles in your hands in mm -hmm. a different way. So if you're working like knitting a ton, doing something else with your hands in a different way, really helps like keep your hands young, I guess. Not cramped. Yeah. I yeah. It really, it helps work out your the tension, the muscles, the overuse and stuff. So I, I try to do polymer clay like once a week, just to give my hands a break, using them in a different way so that I can have that. And I'm so excited for you to just play around. And the ones I've I seen know. that are secret right now, because they're in your autumn box, they are so cute. They're fun. I'm so excited. They're so fun. I'm so happy with mine. I'm going to put them on my projects when I get home. But I don't have any to show, so. I know, so Oops. you're going to have to work on that. I will, I will. Do, are these in your shop? Do you want me to show those too? Oh yeah. Oh, this is the, the pair that 
or the set that Tristan gave me. Because I wanted, I wanted there to be a pretty spooky there we go. set. It's like well. reds. I like reds. It's all pink, Mom. It looks reddish pink. It's the lighting. I have cataracts, too. You do. I don't know how colors are. Um, but real quick, let's do, uh, we should do like our shop update. Show what we've oh my got. God, yeah. For those of you that maybe you're not familiar with our yarn, we yeah, can show you true. our newest colors. I want to see yours. It. I've already shown a couple of mine, uh, my self-striping. I've got one other, I've got two other self-striping, but God, I'm so this is the one you haven't seen. This Which one is that? Beachcomber. It's a little more muted. I love that. It's kind of beachy, like seashell colors, you know, sea glass. I love that dyers can look at like a theme so differently. Yeah, this beachcomber for me would have been like brights and all these things. Really? But like when I look at yours, I'm like, I totally get that. I just I think totally sea glass get that and sand, you know. Well, even with that, I would have been like aquamarine, turquoise, true, true. stuff like that. And that would have worked. worked. And it would have worked. But like looking at that with that theme, it's like that totally fits. That mm -hmm, totally mm -hmm. matches. So and I love that. I'll just show my latest collection. There's only five. And it's my, it's my, like, it's my, one of my colorful fall collections. I, I wanted to... Your brain is so just fascinating. I just I wanted it. to make it not typical, yeah. you know, fall colors, but more like um, rain. And this one's probably the most fall color. But uh, this one's so not. But it, it is. It is, though. And it has orange in it. This one. And I named them all after drinks. Mm -hmm. So um, this one is, uh, I can't remember, Berry Hot Toddy. Because it's got a berry colored base, but it also has the oranges and the browns and yeah. purples in it. I honestly, I always love your art <coughs> collection because it's ones that I never would have seen, but once you see it, you're like, yeah. They're fun. I, I try to do some typical autumn colors too. Mm -hmm. This one is uh, called Purple Dragon Martini. So it's got the fall greens and oranges. Um, this one is. Uh, I really like that one. Frothy Matcha Latte. Which is a sage base. I with green. love that one. Thank you. And then this is. Um, I like that one too. This one is a uh, uh, blueberry whiskey sour. Ooh. So this has got purples, got the orange, got some reds, blues. I really love that. Some aquas, and then the last one. This one is hot buttered bourbon. This is very, very That's fall. That's coming across so perfectly. Thank you. Very fall colored with the greens, the oranges, some reds, some tans. So much fun. I love this I one. Love I want to make something out of that. Yeah. So no, that's I my new that. autumnology. That's I called it so autumnology. Good. I thought that was fun. Anyway, let's see your fall colors. You've got some awesome uh, ones too. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I have a couple that are like more Halloween y. So Halloween -y. Halloween -y. So I got uh, Creepy Girl Tendencies. Ooh. Is that uh, based on a movie? No, it's based on my personality. That is true. <laughs> true Hence story. why I'm knitting a cow for people I never met before and didn't know who I am. But yeah, so Creepy Girl Tendencies. This one's been in my shop for a few weeks. I love it. I paired it with this color for one of my... Um, That's so pretty. For I'm, my newest like for uh, pattern that I'm not going to show you guys now. I'm going to show you next week. So I'm waiting for my sample to come back so I can show you all the That'll things with so it. That'll be so fun. Um, so yeah, that one's that. And it pairs really nicely with this purple. That's a pretty one. Which is um, Undead Dance Party. I like it. So you need to zombify some things. Mm -hmm. And then this is my newest one. It's not necessarily like a vibrant autumn but I thought it just no, went it's so well very, with that palette. It's very typical autumn. Like yeah. uh, not typical I shouldn't say but well, it's I mean, it, I, when you think of autumn. It's called pumpkin spice life. So, it's very I mean, much autumnal. That's accurate. Mm -hmm. So these are my three more like Halloween-y colors mm -hmm. types. I like but them. I mean this also I, I posted on Instagram it crosses and does a fade with some of my more neutral colors which I just came out with. Um, so this is Dying Woods. Sorry. Which is a really good tonal-esque color. Oh, that is pretty. I really wanted a good, like, dirty, brown rusty, or, rust. uh, not rusty yeah. brown type thing. It is and pretty. I love it. I think it's perfect for autumn um, and winter itself as well. And I got um, Midnight Rituals. That one's got, like, a different colors, undertones, mm -hmm. golds or... There's a lot golds, of hidden plums. things in there. Yeah, that's really good. It has a lot of, like, mm, that, this tone that goes. of hidden. Mm -hmm. So I love Midnight Rituals. I, I had a look, because I also have one called Moonlit Tendencies, or Moonlit Promises. 
That's I like that name. That reminds me of Victoria's Secret. Their oh. lotions have like midnight in them. A lot of yeah. their lotions. Well, I already had midnight a colorway romance. called Midnight. I'm like, I have one called uh, Twilight, and mine's not Midnight. Mm. I have Twilight Path, which is in this mini set. Cause I, I I made up a little bit of a mini set just to showcase some of my new colors. That's pretty though. So Pumpkin Spice Life is in the middle. I have Cinnamon Apricot Spice that I've had in my shop forever. Twilight Path is this uh, blue. That's pretty. Really, really deep. And then I have Pumpkin Praline, mm -hmm. which is this color. Just barely, barely came out. So That's it's pretty. your more basic type, um, soft palette, Instagram ready photo mm -hmm. kind of collage. That's actually what I based it off of. Um, which oh, I, I like this. I love. One. I think it's just a good neutral, a good sweater color. It is. For I like sure. for fall it's perfect. Oh yeah. Especially if like if you have a more neutral palette, like if you're into a lot of like taupes and stuff mm -hmm. and uh, it it falls really well within that. And then this is this year's sweater weather. Do you do a different one every year? Every year. That's cool. So Last year's was very vividly red. This one has more of those um, just russety Almost tones in it. Looking. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. It's pretty. Um, and then my favorite from this collection so far has been um, Forgotten Library. Oh, that's like sagey. Mm hmm With some burgundies in there. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of based it off of a Pinterest board I found. <laughs> of just that's like, a good way to get color Oh, that's ideas. such a good way to get some color inspirations. Um, and so it's a lot of like those old like libraries that have like leaves throughout them half the oh, buildings the gone ivy, ivy grown ivy's overgrown well. and stuff and i'm like i love that so it's like a hidden library you find in like an old manor yes old haunted like a lion the witch in the wardrobe yeah that that kind of like up in that like in that, that vein feel yeah so that's my romantic autumn collection i like it and i actually will be bringing a lot of, uh, hopefully bringing a lot of that to woolen folk with me um but yeah those are the things that i'm very happy with right I like now I think they're great. I think yeah. I have it. I'm getting the, all the autumn. Sorry, I'm trying to pick up the stitches. It's so hard because it's kind of dark in here. Yeah, it's getting dark. But yeah, um, I'm getting all the autumn feels, all the autumn vibes. It's that time of year. Seriously, and I love how like this little stitch marker set matches your your collection, your autumnology collection. Oh, it totally does. Yeah, so I love that like you saw in that like the bright fall aspect of it as well. It's like. There's so many di different interpretations of fall, but even like even though there are so many different versions, you can still look at it and get mm -hmm. those feels. And you're like, I just want to light some candles. I I've know. been lighting I've been lighting spruce candles. I almost all over did my that house. for us in here today. Get some pumpkin spice up in this joint. Mm -hmm. Just kind of crazy. I don't like pumpkin spice. I like all spice, and I think most of you out there do as well. Well, you like but the you, smell of pumpkin spice. I like the you? smell of pumpkin spice, but, you don't but like I don't like drink. the taste of it or oh, I love anything. It. And so I think most people out there don't realize it's actually all spicy, like not pumpkin. I don't know. So if you're at Starbucks and you're like, oh, pumpkin spice, and you're like, oh, it's okay. Try their gingerbread Ginger cookie bread. drink, I think. I'll try that. that I like so the pumpkin so spice so a lot. You might like all spice. I probably would. Lie. I probably would um, like it too. But, but I like, yeah, so I'm, I'm. But I don't like pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. <laughs> but there's a lot of allspice in it. <laughs> Okay. Maybe so I'm it. I'm just saying, if you are like confused and somewhere like, oh yeah, I like holiday drinks, but I don't like pumpkin spice. You probably like allspice and try the gingerbread cookie drink. I think. Uh, I don't like drinks that have cookie feel flavors. I usually don't, but I okay. love this. One. I'll try I like, it. I just I'm willing. Inhale it. So I like good. their hot apple cider too. Okay, the that's caramel apple spice. Oh my gosh, oh, I know. I'm just so like good. I'm ready for fall. I'm so ready, and it's so like gloomy and beautiful outside it right is. now. And it's I'm just so perfect. I'm gonna go home and light some candles and. And do, open my windows and I'm gonna you know quit my eyes are like <laughs> you're just trying to share what's outside with everybody oh, on the beautiful <laughs> the autumn day is still overcast it looks like it's been raining oh I'm so, it has been raining yeah perfect I love that but yeah that's really all we have to talk that's about today it. I mean my goodness let's try to we'll try to check back in next week mm -hmm. Thursdays or, we're gonna try to record yeah Yep, we'll try to get there and mm -hmm. who knows I we have things we didn't even show today oh yeah I have a pile of like eight objects that I'm just like, oh, I'll talk about next week. We just bring it all and see what we have time for. Mm -hmm. And it worked out. So but yeah, and we will have more and more exciting news coming down the line the closer we get to Woolen Folk. Um, make yep. sure you let us know if there's anything specific like you really wanted to see at Woolen Folk this year. Just put it in the comments below. Um, and I'm really interested in the Paul Worth, like the different like things other than Merino. I'm really curious about that. Yeah. Yep. So just let us know in the comments and Bye.